welcome to Vet Talk. This is your boy, brother Vince, man. We're back in the building one more time, man. Thank you for stopping through my YouTube channel, man. Like, share, subscribe, pass this message along. Holla at your boy, man. This is your brother, brother Vince. Veterans, welcome, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Non-veterans, welcome, 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 welcome. All right, so today, man, we're going to be going through a little journey for all of those people who have hurt someone in their lifetime. And when I mean hurt somebody by um somebody in their li- during their lifetime, man, maybe you that person that may have burnt a lot of bridges out there. Maybe you that veteran who, you know, you went to Afghanistan, Iraq, you murdered some people, you done some things in life that makes you feel down on yourself and you may be feeling like, man, there ain't no hope for you. I'm here to talk to you about that today because I too once felt like that. It wasn't just the military things that I've went through and the things that I've done in the military, but it was my life before the military. Long story short, me going into the military was me running from a lot of things that I had done in life. As a child, I'd done some things in life that I'm too, in, I was, I was too embarrassed at one time to talk about and due to the WWW, the World Wide Web, I won't say what those things are, but you're going to understand that I've done some things that, man, I'm going to be honest to you. I should have been in prison for the things that I've done, the things that I've done in life, man. I'm one of those people that, man, sometimes, you know, I don't even understand how God was able to forgive me. You know, some there were times in my life where, man, I was so down on myself, even as a Christian, when I first got saved, one of the things I struggled with was trying to live down everything I had done. You know, I'm not that person who might have had things that happened to me and I was a victim. But as always, some victims end up being the person that victimized and hurt other people. And that's who I was. I was that person that went out there and did God knows what to other people. And I didn't realize that I was hurt, hurting other people. And that's one of the things that I see happen a lot. You know, there's somebody in, incarcerated for rape, molestation, um, somebody in prison for, you know, just a God number of things. Well, this message is to you that God grace is sufficient unto you. And that he will forgive you for your sins and debts. He will forgive you for the things that you have done. I'm here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you that because just like you, I too have done things that, man, I shouldn't have done in life. You know what I'm saying? And for a long time, I used to live, you know, beating myself down for those things. And a lot of the things that I've done in life, it led to me, you know, drinking alcohol. Um, It led to me having a, a, a sexual addiction. It left, you know, me, um, me in a state to where, you know what I'm saying? I needed, you know, drugs to kind of, you know, try to block out some of the thoughts that would go through my mind, which I didn't know at the time was the devil, you know, constantly in my head, you know, telling me that I was a failure, making me feel bad for the things that I've done and the things I've done. Yeah, I should have felt bad for it, but to live the, a life of being in, you know, condemned, that's that's not how God wanted me to live. And I didn't understand that. But I thank God for, you know, the people that he put in my life as far as the ministers that minister to me on um, far as my my pastor now. And then I read this book by um Brother John Ramirez talking about conquering your deliverance. I, you know, I recommend y'all go out there, look up EX Ministries. I recommend y'all go out there and read books written by, you know, Pastor Ramirez, which was a former Satanist. Um, there are a lot of um people out there that wrote some great books that can help you with, you know, these things that, you know, maybe beating you down or making you feel like there's no hope for you. I'm here to tell you, man, just like Paul said, man, I was a chief sinner. When I say chief sinner, man, I was one of those people who called themselves a Christian, but yet I was doing the same things that everybody else was doing in the world, you know. I was supposed to be a Christian, but I was smoking, drinking, running around with different, you know, women just doing, you know, God knows a number of things, man. And then I was that person who really got clean, really got saved, but still yet I was living a life to where I was still feeling bad because of the mistakes and 
the non-mistakes that I made in life. But I'm here to tell you that, man, God grace is sufficient unto you. You know what I'm saying? So you can live a saved life. And what helped me with that was reading the scriptures about people who were just like me. I mean, there are a number of people in the Bible who made mistakes. I mean, we can go to David. We can go to um Jacob. You know, we can go to, you know, Adam. I mean, there's just a number of people who done things that God wasn't pleased with. We can go to Moses. I mean, there are a number of people you can go back and read their story. And not everybody in the Bible was a victim or something. Some people actually did things that was not pleasing to God. You know, Paul, you know, who wrote, you know, most of the New Testament, man. You know, he did some things, man. And we're going to talk about that later because he addressed it. You know, and he talked about how, you know, it seemed like, you know, he, he, he had this thing, his flesh that keep buffeting him, that kept, you know, him, you know, feeling, you know, like he was in despair or hopeless, but, you know, God soon talked to him and let him know that his grace was sufficient unto him and that he, you know, he was able to, you know, to just hold on to Christ and make it and survive. So I'm talking to you today from that perspective, because again, I understand, man, what it's like to make so many mistakes in life to where you feel hopeless. But I'm here to tell you, man, that's not the type of life God wants you to live. Because Jesus said that he came that you may have life and life more abundantly. And I want you to live in that abundant life. That's why I made a decision to talk to veterans and whoever else listened to it, man. I just want you to know, man. Yeah, I may be, you know, taking a stance against a lot of things. But what I don't do is I'm not shutting up the kingdom of God for those who believe in him. You know, the the kingdom is for anybody who's willing to confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that Jesus is Lord and he is king. You know, the kingdom is for you. You know, all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you shall be saved. You know, the salvation is for anyone who's willing to, you know, whomsoever will. So don't feel like, you know, you accounted out. God don't love you. I don't care if you used to be a Christian and you walked away because of church hurt. God grace is still sufficient unto you in the sense of if you give your life to him, he'll give you grace for what you've done. But the big key to it all is you have to give him your life. If you don't give him your life, then you can't walk in grace. It's impossible for you to walk in grace without truly, truly giving God your life. You know, you can't get you can't get God's grace if you're not willing to forgive somebody for what they've done. You you have to forgive. In order for you to be forgiven, you have to forgive. There's just certain things that you can't just, you know, push to the side and pretend like, okay, you know what I'm saying? And if you know you have an odd against your brother, something you did, the Bible say you with your spiritual, you know, restore such a one if you find him in sin. Or, you know, um, you know you did something to your brother, go to him and him alone. Or if he did something to you or she did something to you, you know, vice versa, go to him, make it right. Because, you know, part of my story, um, even though I done a lot of bad stuff I did in life, I did go back to people. Some people slammed the door in my face unfortunately, but I pray that they would, you know, come to the knowledge to understand the truth and they'll forgive me. And I understand that a lot of bridges I burn in life, I may not be able to cross those bridges no more. But if the Lord opened the door for me too, I'll be able to go in peace with the, go in peace, uh, walk in peace and love on those people, you know? So I'm just here to just, you know, just talk to you a little bit. So what I want to do is I wanted to take you to Genesis 32 and I want um to read a little bit about, you know, Jacob, because Jacob is one of the persons that I identify with a lot because Jacob was a trickster. The name Jacob means trickster. And as we know, Jacob, you know, basically stole Esau's birthright and he and he he pretended like he was his brother and stole that blessing. And throughout, you know, Jacob's story, Jacob went through a lot because of just the decisions that he made. And at some point, man, he came face to face with God. And I believe that every person comes to that comes to that place in life to where they end up meeting God face to face, not physically, but they find themselves at that crossroad where they have to really, truly, truly deal with who they are and what they have done. And that's what happened to Jacob. So in Genesis um, 32, verse 
20, I would say, I, I'm going to take y'all down to, let me see. Um, Okay, bear with me for a second. I say verse 24, and it says, And Jacob was left alone, and there he wrestled with a man until the break of day. And when he saw that he had prevailed not against him, he he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day break of. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be no more Jacob, which means trickster, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with man and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore it is that thou doeth, doeth acts after my name. And he blessed them there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So in this story, Jacob came face to face with God. And he was, a, and in this moment, him wrestling to me symbolically is him going through a period where he was transitioning from who he was into who he was about to become. And there are a lot of you who are in this transition. Maybe you may be locked up. Maybe you may be that brother or that sister right now holding that body on your hand, but you feel such a conviction or even listening to this message, you are convicted in your heart to the point to where you feel like you're in, in a struggle, but something God want to do for you today is he want to help you overcome that struggle of, going from who you used to be to who you are in him. And you got to get saved, you know, first of all. But then once you go through that, you know, becoming saved, you go through a period where you feel like there's a, a struggle or you're wrestling or, you know, you, you're dying to the old person, who you used to be. And, and and dying to that person, you know, thoughts going through your mind about who you were and what you used to do. But just know that, man, you no longer that person. That's why Jacob was able to go from Jacob to Israel. God changed his name, not only physically, but spiritually, because, you know, God says in his word, as far as the east from the west, saw your sins before him. So now you don't no longer have to live as the old person, because the Bible says any man who be in Christ, he's a new creation. And now you're a new creation because of your decision to live for Christ. You don't have to live as the old person. You don't have to live with, you know, what you've done. Although you may, you know, have issues and problems in your life that are the results of what you've done. You don't have to live condemned for what you've done, which, which is why we are going to go to Romans, you know, the eighth chapter, and we are going to read about just, you know, what God says to you concerning this. And right here in Romans, the eighth chapter, starting at the first verse, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So in order for you to truly, truly not feel condemned no more, you can't walk after the flesh. And when the Bible talks about after the flesh, you can't be fulfilling the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. You can't be doing things that your flesh feel like doing. That means you can't be still drinking, smoking, going to the club, living a lascivious lifestyle, you know, caught up in adultery, fornication, you know, just a number of things. You just can't be doing those things no more. If you want to feel, if you don't want to feel condemned, then stop doing the very things that you used to do. If you're a new creation, you got to live as such. You can't live in the same old things you used to do and expect yourself not to feel condemned. Folks want to know how I am able to walk around not feeling condemned because I stopped doing the things that I used to do. I walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Because in the second verse, it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin 
and condemn sin in the flesh. So that's what Christ came to do. He came so that you can have life, so you can live a, a life to where you no longer condemn. You know, I remember the story about, you know, the woman who was caught in adultery. And here it is, the Pharisees trying Jesus. They brought her there because she was caught in adultery, which is crazy that the man and her both was committing adultery, but they decided to bring the woman and condemn her. They brought her to Jesus and asked her her ask these questions and Jesus say ye which are without you know ye who are without sin let him cast the first stone and then when they start thinking about the fact that they all committed sin and they all done things that God wasn't pleased with they all dropped their stones and they walked away and then Jesus after drawing a line in the sand looked up and say women why art thou accusers and basically there was none and Jesus told her that if they didn't see it fit for them, for her to be condemned, then he don't see it that way too. And he released her from a sentence. And basically like he always do when he, in a certain case where he healed people, set free people free and delivered, he said, go and sin no more. So if you want to walk in a life where you're not feeling condemned, you have to stop doing what it is that you used to do. You have to change. And I know you may say, brother Vince, how do I do that? Well, you got to get in God's word. You got to ask God to give you the scrim. You got to know that you can do all things through Christ Jesus, which gives you the scrim. You got to be, you know, submitted and surrendered to the Lord, which, you know, will fill you with the Holy Spirit, which will give you the power and the ability to overcome these things. You know, you got to fast, you got to read, you got to pray. And most importantly, you got to make sure that you're a part of a fellowship. You can't be someone who just come on the internet, look at every pastor that you see on on on, on the um on YouTube or on TV and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you not submit it and surrender to some kind of leadership that you know you can be accountable to. You know, in a multitude of counselors, as it says in um, I think either Proverbs or Psalms, I might be saying the, or the um that incorrectly. But there's um there's safety, you know, so you have to be surrounded by people that can help you. That's what we do as brothers and sisters in Christ. We help one another out. But if you're not a part of those things, then, yes, your struggle is going to be very hard. Then you're going to have to stop being around people who are or were a part of your former life. You know, you may have to stop watching certain things on TV. Like for me, I can't watch nudity. In t on TV. I had to learn to cut that stuff off. You know, for a long time, I kept trying to figure out why is it that I was still struggling with sexual sin? A lot of it was because I was putting things in my eyes. The Bible say your eyes are the gateway to your heart. So if you got things in your life that you still look at, or some of you may be still listening to hip hop, R and B and different things. It may be, you know, rock and roll. This is just a number of things that you can be putting in your way that cause you, cause you to stumble or it makes it hard for you to be that person that God has truly, truly saved. Because some of you got saved, but you start allowing the old man to come back by not getting rid of the old things. You know, I heard somebody say that it's insanity for you to keep the, doing the same thing, expecting different results. It's insanity. So don't live like that, man. Give up those things that you need to give up. God been dealing with you to give it up. Give it up. Let it go. It's not worth holding on to. And how I know this is true, because I'm going to take you to Ephesians, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 27 through 29. And we're going to discuss some things, man. So in Ephesians 4 and 27, um, it says, need to give place to the debtor, the devil. Let him that steal, steal no more, but rather let him labor, work of with his hands the things which is good, that he may give to, I mean, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good into the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So what I'm telling you right now is what the Bible is saying. Don't, don't get a place to the devil no more. Stop giving the devil place in your life. You got to stop it. The devil has no power and authority over you. But what he does is he puts things around you 
that you're tempted by because of your flesh and you find yourself doing things or desiring things that God don't want for you. And it could be because you're around the wrong people. You got to realize and know that sometimes you could be around people who the devil's speaking through, especially if you're a veteran and you're around old battle buddies who keep reminding you, of, uh, reminding you of who you are. You know, every time they get around you, they cuss them, they smoking, they drinking, they living a the life that you used to live. You know, 29, so let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. You know, corrupt communication is, is not just talking about people. It's not just saying bad and negative things. It's profanity. You know, corrupt communication can be a number of things. So if you're looking at movies with this stuff in it, if you're watching things on TV, you're making your way harder. And now you're doing what tw verse 27 says, you're giving place to the devil. You know, you're doing the opposite of what 27 says, you're giving place to the devil. You know what I'm saying? But look at how the author wrote it and said, let him that steal, steal no more. If you used to steal, if you used to lie, if you used to cheat, if you used to do a number of things, whatever you used to do, don't do it no more. You want to walk free and you want to live a non-condemned life, don't do what you used to do. Stop doing the things that you used to do. Move yourself, remove yourself from these things, man. Remove yourself from these things, man. Remove yourself from these things, man. Jesus addressed that stuff, man. You know, so, I mean... Just, just stop doing what you were doing and, you know, live a, a free life in Christ, man, because you don't have to live bound to your old ways, your old sin and everything else that you used to do. And I'm going to take you and show you where Paul was addressing some things that he was dealing with. I'm going to take you to the scripture, which is second Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And we're going to start. I would say. At the seventh verse, and he said, at least I should be exalted more above measure through the abundance of revelation. There was given to me a thorn in my flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. At least I should be exalted above measure for the things I besought the Lord thrice that it may depart from me. See here, it was something that he had. He kept feeling like, man. This every time it's like I, I'm trying to do the right thing. It's this thing in my flesh that the devil keep bringing and presenting to me that keeps me, you know, on edge, man. And for you, maybe it may be that drugs and maybe it may be the alcohol. Maybe it may be that woman or that man. It, it could be whatever thing in your life that's a struggle. But just know that the Lord is here for you. He's here for you. Even if you made a mistake and you slip and fell into it, he's made a way for you. And we're going to read what he says that the Lord said unto him. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity and reproach and necessity and persecution and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the life that I'm living now. For the longest time of my life, man, I was walking around condemned, beating myself down. Praying to God, Lord, remove this thing from me. It's like every time I found myself walking somewhere, going somewhere, the very things that I used to do would always be before me. And it was just like a struggle. And I kept trying to figure out, Lord, why hasn't it gone away? I'm a new creation in Christ. But yet I'm still struggling with this thing. This thing, you know, whatever that thing may be for you, just know that God's gr grace is sufficient for you and that his strength is made perfect in your weakness. You don't have to walk around falling into that thing no more. Just connect to the true vine. Just connect to him. Just understand that there's therefore not no condemnation unto you which are in Christ. Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The key to it is you got to walk after the spirit and not after, after the flesh. You got to cut off the TV. You got to cut off those friends. You got to stop going to that club. You got to stop going to that bar. You got to stop going around the ex-girlfriend, boyfriend, 
You got to stop going around the things that keep tripping you up. Because if you want to live a life with peace, then you got to give up some things. The Bible, Jesus said in order for us to be his disciples, we had to deny ourselves, deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. You, you got to give it up. You want to walk in God's grace, you got to give up some things, man. Is it going to be easy? Like Paul said, nah, it's not easy because I keep going to God about the same thing. But guess what? His grace is sufficient unto thee. And that's why I'm able to walk around not feeling like I am who I was. Yeah, I'm still that person as in the body, but in the spirit, I'm no longer that person. I'm a changed man. And you can be a changed man or woman. God can set you free. And the Bible says, whomever the sun set free is truly free indeed. That's what I'm here to tell you today. Whomever the sun set free is truly free indeed. Don't allow your accusers to keep coming to you, accusing you about which, you know, telling you about what you've done. You know, people can tell you all day a lot of the things that Brother Vince do, did. And I can come to you or talk to you and say, yeah, Brother Vince did do that. Brother Vince did do this. I'm not ashamed of what I've done in the sense of um, I'm walking around feeling condemned. Am I disappointed and ashamed of what I've done? Yeah. Yeah. Things I've done in life, I shouldn't have never done it. I shouldn't have never done it. And I was totally wrong. And I accept full responsibility for that. So when the devil comes to me, yeah, devil, that's who I was. Yep. That's what I've done. I ain't no shame in my game no more. See, when I lived in shame, it was because I was still doing some of the things that I was shameful. So it was hard for me not to feel the shame of those things. But because I walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, then I know that there's therefore no now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I'm able to walk free of those things and not holding my head down, trying to deny who I was. Man, yeah, I, I was that person, but the old me has been buried and crucified with Christ. So it is not I who live, but it's he that lives through me. And I'm here to tell you that God wants to live through you. So I'm going to take you through a little prayer that may help you. Close your eyes or bow your head, however you seek to do it. Dear Heavenly Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for allowing me to have the opportunity with this veteran, this non-veteran, or whoever it may be on the other end of this video, Lord. I pray that, Lord, the same way that I feel peace about the things that I've done in life, I pray that that person would receive your peace, Lord, that they will walk in your grace, which is sufficient unto them, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would help them, Father God, to get to the place to where they may confess with their mouth and believe in their heart, because maybe there's someone out there struggling with believing in you. Maybe they're dealing with fear, doubt, and unbelief which are weapons that the devil uses to keep them bound to who they used to be. Maybe they're struggling, Lord, because they're surrounded with the people or things that they used to do, Lord. And I ask that, Lord, you would help them to remove those things, Lord, that causes them to stumble and fall. And, Lord, I pray that, Lord, they will have a closer relationship with you. I, pr I pray that that brother or that sister will find a church on that they can fellowship, Lord, with like-minded believers, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would give them the strength to be able to do all things through Christ Jesus, which gives us the strength. And I pray that not my will, but your will will be done, Lord. Not their will, but your will will be done, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So just give God your life, man. Let him in your heart. Don't live a condemned life. He set you free. And whomever the sun set free is truly free indeed.